The time is 10 a.m. and this is WKYT Midmorning. Police are looking for a suspect in the shooting death of a pregnant woman. Her unborn child also died. Soil contaminated with arsenic is being removed in Montgomery County. And someone is shooting horses in eastern Kentucky and the suspect is still at large. This is WKYT Midmorning. Good morning and welcome in. It is Thursday, September 8th. We're glad you're with us on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Glad you're along with us. A little closer to the weekend. Now we're getting a closer look at when that rain might be yeah, moving in. And it moves in and then it's gone by the end of the weekend, but that may mess with some plans. So let's check in with Micah right now, see what's going on. Yeah, and it looks like it's going to mess with our plans, especially as we go off towards your Friday and Saturday. That's the times where a lot of these events and festivals come together, and unfortunately, that's the best chance of rain. We're sitting there in the upper 70s to lower 80s for many locations. We'll finish off basically where we were yesterday, roughly 90 degrees, but storms are going to be moving on in later on this evening off into the night. Are we looking at any possibility of severe weather? I'm going to get into that in just a few minutes. And we'll see you shortly. Thank you. First, this mid-morning, Lexington police are looking for the person who shot a pregnant woman overnight. The woman and her unborn baby died. Awful story. It happened around 11 o'clock last night on Winburn Drive. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is tracking the situation for us now. She joins us live with our top story on mid-morning. Well, officers continue to come and go from the scene out here at the Matador North Apartments along Windburn Drive as they continue to try and piece together what exactly happened out here. At this point, investigators have no description of the shooter. 22-year-old Mariah Coleman died at UK Hospital early this morning. Doctors were unable to save Coleman's baby, Jacoby. She was eight months pregnant. We were told Coleman was out walking her dog when she was shot. Police on scene early this morning say they have received conflicting reports, but that the shooting could have happened during an attempted robbery. Friends of the victim tell us a baby shower was planned for Coleman this Saturday. Now, we did just speak to the brother of Coleman's boyfriend, who is also the father of that baby who did not survive. You will hear from him coming up later on WKYT at noon. For now, live in Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. Now, there were some other witnesses on the scene who were interviewed by the police, but there are no suspects at this time. A Lexington man is accused of spying on people in a public bathroom. Freddie Gillis is charged with video voyeurism. Lexington police say he used a camera phone to view people in a public bathroom in multiple locations. His arrest citation does not say where these incidents took place. Gillis will be arraigned this afternoon. A major traffic alert this morning. Police have closed two lanes of I-75 in Madison County. It's part of an investigation into a deadly crash that happened last month. Police say 67-year-old David McDowell died August 28th when his motorcycle and a car collided in Madison County around mile marker 85. Police say both were trying to avoid a previous crash. It was one of several accidents near that mile marker on the interstate that day. As part of today's investigation, the two left lanes of I-75 South are closed between mile markers 84 and 85. Police say they should be reopened by around 11 a.m. Soil contaminated with arsenic is now being removed from several properties in Montgomery County. The Department of Environmental Protection says six homes on Long Lane have arsenic levels so high that it requires immediate remediation. The project is expected to take about six weeks, and that is not sitting well with many people who are impacted by it. Even if they do what they promise, living here may be better, but the impact and the devastation that we've already went through are mental anxieties. I don't think that's ever going to leave us. The Montgomery County Health Department and the Department for Public Health out of Frankfort was also on scene. They've been taking toenail clippings from dozens of people living in that area and they will use those to test for arsenic exposure. A man convicted of murdering his girlfriend will be sentenced today in Lexington. Last month, the jury found Par Paris Charles guilty in the 2014 murder of Golia Massey. Parts of her dismembered body washed up onto the shore of the Kentucky River in two different counties. The jury recommended Charles spend 36 years in prison. 
Investigators say a Laurel County couple will now be facing murder charges after the death of their seven week old daughter. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office has now charged Gary and Jessica Nicely with murder and criminal abuse. Deputies say the Nicely's baby girl died at Kentucky Children's Hospital last week after suffering serious injuries. The baby's twin sister was also taken to the same hospital with injuries. Investigators say the couple has blamed each other for the abuse of their twin girls. Three horses have been shot to death in eastern Kentucky, and now police are looking for the killer. The Johnson County Sheriff's Office says a man found the dead horses on a mountain in the Greasy community. Other horses were roaming in the area. Animal rescue groups have since removed them. Investigators have not yet said if they have any suspects. A new study of eastern Kentucky workers says the labor force has declined by 20 percent over the past 10 years. The survey says many people have stopped looking for work because a lack of professional certification and the struggling coal industry are holding them back. Researchers say creating tax-free zones and securing government contracts could help bring new jobs to eastern Kentucky. Well, Hillary Clinton is supporting a bill that would protect health care and pension benefits for about 120,000 former coal miners and their families. The Democratic presidential nominee says people who have spent their lives keeping the lights on for our country should not be left without benefits after they retire. Clinton's statement comes as thousands of retired miners and their supporters are expected to gather at the Capitol today to push for the bill. The measure has divided coal state Republicans. Several endangered incumbents are supporting the bill, but Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and some other GOP leaders are wary of bailing out unionized workers. Well, the 2016 presidential candidates are back out on the campaign trail today. It comes a day after they made their cases to be commander in chief. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump took the same stage during last night's forum in New York, but at different times, and fielded tough questions from veterans. Hannah Daniels has the highlights. The main thing is I have great judgment. Donald Trump sought to win over voters, including servicemen and women, last night, maintaining he was against the war in Iraq. I was totally against the war in Iraq. And hinting at a private plan to defeat ISIS. If I win, I don't want to broadcast to the enemy exactly what my but plan is. The Republican nominee was challenged by this Army veteran who questioned his immigration policy for military members. Do you believe that an undocumented person who serves, who wants to serve in the U.S. Armed Forces, deserves to stay in this country legally? That's a very special situation, and I could see myself working that out, absolutely. Trump grew defensive when questioned by moderator Matt Lauer about his relationship with Russia's president. If he says great things about me, I'm going to say great things about him. An absolute rock steadiness. Hillary Clinton, who appeared on stage first, touted her temperament while drawing a line in the Middle East. We are not putting ground troops into Iraq ever again. And we're not putting ground troops into Syria. The Democratic nominee spent much of the night defending herself against her email scandal. I communicated about classified material on a wholly separate system. I took it very seriously. The two candidates go head to head in their first presidential debate at the end of the month. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. Today, Donald Trump heads to Cleveland, Ohio, where he'll address education. Hillary Clinton makes appearances in both North Carolina and Missouri. Well, swimmer Ryan Lochte has been suspended 10 months by the United States Olympic Committee and USA Swimming for his involvement in a highly publicized late-night incident at a gas station during the Rio Games last month. It uh, was a lot of talk during the Olympics, and the 12-time Olympic medalist said a stranger pointed a gun at him and demanded money to let him leave the gas station. Lochte had initially called it a robbery. Brazilian police said that he and three other swimmers vandalized a bathroom at the station and were confronted by armed security guards. So it sounds like uh, now they're going to try to resolve all that. Well, keep it right here this mid morning. We're going to take you to a town where if you're a beer drinker, you're in heaven. <laughs> Check that out. Also, a Hollywood actress talks about portraying a tragic figure in American politics. It's a great looking start to the day, but once we hit deep into the evening, off into the nighttime hours, that's when some storms move on in. Are we worried about these storms or are they just run-of-the-mill thunderstorms? I'm going to explain that coming up next. 
now, your Zone by Zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Things are looking pretty good across the region at this very moment. Here before noontime, we're looking outside. It's pretty much the same story as the past few days. We get into your afternoon right around 90 degrees. We'll have a few clouds filter in here and there, but for the most part, I don't see any problems whatsoever. Now, as we travel off into your night, that's going to be a different story. Here is the look. Remember, this is not during the daylight hours. Daylight hours, you're talking about a 10% chance of rain. Once you head off into the evening, 7, 8 p.m., off into 9 p.m., that's where you see a few storms pop up to the far northern zones, and then they'll slowly glide southbound, which will put them across 64 corridor, I would say 10, 11, uh, maybe even midnight. So 10 to midnight around 64 corridor, there's a 40% chance of rain, not 100%, which means what? Not everybody's going to see these, and if you do, you get some pretty heavy downpours out of this. Watch this, okay? This is what I'm talking about. Here's 5 p.m., nothing going on. East, southeastern Kentucky, you have no shot at actually getting some storms for today. It's going off into the evening and into the night. Watch this, it developing up toward the north. Still nothing really all that impressive. Like I said, a 40% chance, not 100%. That takes you off into the overnight hours and still a few storms will be left over. If you're planning on attending any events going on, you got the poker run Friday and Saturday. Out at Lake Cumberland, I would say go Friday and Saturday. And the reason why I say that, both days have a chance of rain, and both days a pretty decent shot at rain. Friday is more of your hit and miss, so you may be missed than, say, hit. And then Saturday, it's a line of storms moving through, meaning much of your day is going to be dry, except for that one to two hours as this line of thunderstorms passes on through. Trading day is going on in Williamsburg, uh, kicking off today, actually, which will be dry. Friday is mainly dry, and then you get towards your Saturday. That's a better chance of rain there. Then you're looking at Oktoberfest. Christ the Kings kicks off Friday, goes into Saturday, both of those days with chances of rain. Costa Superhero Run right now. Remember, this is Saturday morning, and it looks like uh, that event should be pretty dry, so I don't see many issues there. And also kicking off uh, down in Danville, it is the Barbecue Festival, Kentucky State Barbecue Festival down in Danville. We have them coming up, uh, and it should be fun. I can smell the food, guys. Uh, I can. You got, you got the scent. They there. brought you it. Know it. They brought it. But yeah, <laughs> it looks like that moves through on Saturday. Once it pushes on through, remember that only lasts an hour or two. That line of storms, and then the rest of the day is good. So just keep that in mind. Stick to your plans. <laughs> okay, go, stick to your plan. Yeah, yeah. That's just know that. Short-term issue. All right. That's right. Thank you. Well, a small European town is hoping to increase tourism by installing, of all things, beer fountains. Ah, uh, here we go. It is the city of Slavic Slovenia. That has just opened up a series of beer fountains to the public. Local entrepreneurs came up with the idea and eventually got city officials on board with the idea. The brew fountains do come at a price for $6.75. American money, that is. You can get a special glass mug with a microchip that allows you five pours. Now, since this town, Salik, is a major producer of hops, one of the main ingredients in beer, city officials say the fountains are meant to promote tourism and the hop growing tradition of the city. Well, oh, so, that's one way so to do it. They made their case, right? That's one way to do it. You're right. Well, Natalie Portman talks about the challenges of her newest movie role, plus why Marilyn Monroe's dress could be worth millions. And something new from Lady Gaga. Chris Martinez has your eye on entertainment. Lady Gaga's newest single hits the airwaves tomorrow. The pop star posted the release date for Perfect Illusion on social media along with the cover art. Marilyn Monroe's birthday song to President Kennedy made her dress almost as famous as she was. The flesh color beaded gown has become such an icon, it's expected to draw as much as $3 million at Julian's auction house this fall. We will have a procession, and I will walk to the cathedral with the casket. Natalie Portman says starring in the movie Jackie posed a special kind of challenge. Portman plays Jacqueline Kennedy during the time she was first lady and after her husband's assassination. People know what she looked like and what she sounded like and how she moved. So I really wanted to, to get that right, but then also not do a caricature. Portman was in Italy Wednesday for the film's world premiere at the Venice Film Festival. 
Stars gathered for the New York premiere of the newest comedy from producer Lorne Michaels. Brother-in-law. Technically, we're not even that yet. To let to my heart. Brother Nature shows what happens when a buttoned-up politician gets acquainted with his rowdy future in-laws. It was just a good group of really funny, talented people, um, and I had such a wonderful experience with them. Brother Nature arrives in theaters and on demand on Friday. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, coming right up, Micah mentioned it earlier. It's all about the barbecue in downtown Danville this weekend. Details about the Kentucky State Barbecue Festival next on WKYT. Friday night's Mega Millions jackpot is $111 million, and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot has climbed to $205 million. Hey, welcome back. It's great to have you with us here on WKYT at mid-morning. Celebrity pitmasters from all over the country are going to be cooking up some delicious barbecue in downtown Danville this very weekend. Brad Simmons, the founder of the Kentucky State Barbecue Festival, and also Tim McKeska, who's from Texas but has come back again in seeing it. Just couldn't stay away from I wouldn't Kentucky, miss it for right? The world. They're here, and the we're glad deal. to welcome them. Yeah. Glad to have you here. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us. I want to talk. To about the festival, obviously, and promote uh, Harvard Kentucky United Way, which is who we benefit, mm -hmm. and uh, talk about some things. Uh, what's what's happening this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? We have uh, free admission, free parking, free music, nine bands. There's plenty of things for the whole family, plenty of stuff for the kiddos to do, and plenty of adult beverages also. Oh. And it's all yes. free. And it's well to, to, get, in, to well. get in. To get in, it's yeah. free, and then yeah. you just uh, pay for what you go around to what different you need. vendors and so yeah, that's, that's right. Great. So there's a lot of information on our website. But I brought a pork butt, which, by the way, is not from the butt. Oh, pig. <laughs> okay. yeah, so we've learned Thank something. you for clearing that it's up. It's the butt so end of the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and I brought that with me, and I wanted to show you what it looks like when it's uh -huh. properly done. In fact, this one's a little bit over properly done. This is called the money muscle. So the uh -huh. bone is here, and when it's done correctly, are we on camera here? Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. You just yeah. give this a tug. Pull that right in. And there you go. So do you oh, think wow, that's done that properly? Easy. Yeah, that's right. Shoulder blade. So, so this is what the pork butt looks like, and on this end, you can just take your hand in here and just roll this money muscle off, and you have never tasted anything near as well, good you can, as that. You can see I how bet tender it is. So. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, tell us what you're going to be doing at uh, the big event. I'm going to be the MC. I kind of keep everything, uh, the people focused on where they need to go and what they need to be, be at in regards to all the great things. There's so many great things that are going on at this festival, and it is free free parking, free admission, and you get to pick and choose the pit masters you want to be with and who you want to buy your food from. There's no limitation. So you can go around and talk to people and try different things. Oh, that's TV, perfect. Championships. I mean, he'll yeah. tell you the championships that are represented at this festival. It's absolutely amazing. It's amazing. So the, all the cats you see on TV, all these TV celebrity pitmasters are right in Danville. You can go up to them. Ask them some secrets. Uh -huh. uh, well, can, will they can, reveal can, those secrets? Oh, I don't know about that. How competitive does this get? Oh, this, you know, not, not, not too competitive. It's, it's fun. really, it's really a lot of fun. It's really family and barbecue family is amazing. And this guy uh, has forgotten more than most people will ever know about barbecue. It's a true story. I don't know why he comes up, uh, comes back probably for the bourbon and the, the pretty women and the but horses. You're, you're glad and he the does. barbecue too. It's the and whole the thing. What a great thing. It's this very weekend. It'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right? Friday, Saturday, and right. Sunday. Uh, information's at our website, kybbqfestival.com. It's right there on the screen. And uh, Four Roses is a big sponsor. We've got Crispin Mill Winery. We've got Wilderness Trail Distillery making cocktails. We've got bounce houses for the kids and the live bands. And, of course, the smell of the smoke. That's <laughs> yes. what's going to keep well, Just this smell is, is oh, wonderful. No. You've got it coming. all. Come early, come Thank hungry. You. All Thank right. That's all I like that. Come early, come hungry. <laughs> well, keep it right here this mid-morning. We're going to check in with the Mr. Food Test Kitchen next and see what's cooking up there. We're glad you're along with us today. They're working on dessert today in the Mr. Food <laughs> Test Kitchen. It kind of goes with our last you're segment. Saying, Enjoy that, barbecue. and here's dessert. Yeah, apple pie, but it's not just any apple pie. It's Grandma Millie's apple pie. I'm so excited because we're launching a new series called Grandma's Best Recipes. And with us today to kick things off is Grandma Millie who makes a pretty mean apple pie. Welcome, Millie. Hi, Howie. How I, are you? I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for asking me. You know, your apple pie is really good. Where did you ever learn to make them? When my kids were little, we lived in a house with five apple trees, all different varieties. I never did find out what they were. And every fall, we would pick, the boys would come and pick the apples. 
and the girls would uh, go in the kitchen and prepare the apples, and we would uh, have a blast making cakes and pies and cookies and you name it. Tell me, what makes your pie so unique? The trick is to use an assortment of apples, some tart, some sweet, and they need to be sliced very thin. I always add a little bit of clove to the cinnamon and the nutmeg. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, Millie, this is incredible. And you're right, the mix of all the different apples along with the spices, and your TLC, of course, makes this amazing. If you'd like the recipe for Grandma Millie's apple pie, of course you can find it on our website. Millie, thanks for sharing your family secret with us. Oh, Howard, this was so much fun. Thank you so much for having I'm me. I'm glad you're here. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found Grandma Millie's old-fashioned way for you to say. Ooh, it's, it's so, so good. good. It is. Here, let's have some. Ooh, Aunt right. Millie can do it upright. Yeah, yeah, Listen, I don't good. care how good that is. It's not as good as that that I just ate. I mean, those guys. <laughs> yeah, notice you didn't wait for the rest of it. No, I didn't. I go straight for it, man. All right, 90 degrees the rest of the afternoon. It looks pretty good the rest of the day. Kids coming home from school, no problem. You going out to the grocery store, going to take a run, no issues whatsoever. It's really during the evening and night when you're trying to go to bed that you actually see some storms move on in, especially central, north, and western zones. Storms Friday for some, and then the best chances on Saturday. We'll go over that at noon. Okay, right, and we hope you'll join us for WKYT News at Move. We will have all the latest. Have a great day, everybody.